And so the next part of our teaching is about connection. And the red thread is a talisman. It's a symbol that we play with in our community. It's a symbol of connection with each other, even though many of us have never met and some of you I've met. It's an acknowledgement that the Native American idea of we are all related is real, because it is. This is real. We are all related and we have work to do. And so I'm inviting you, even if you're new to us, maybe you're uncertain about me and my muse, that's okay, you don't have to hold on to the red thread yet, but I'm inviting you if you want to, to help create a connection between all of our cafes and all of our studios across the world. Isn't that just a brave and exciting idea? We don't really know how it works, but in some way, we've always been saying, I'm sending you my love. Were you really sending love? You really were. Did the other person on the other side of you sending love actually feel it? Well, your love went there whether they felt it or not. It did. It went there. But if you say, the next time you say to your mama across the world or your child who's wishing to see you or your lover that you've been separated from or any separation you have, the next time you say, I'm sending you my love, will you receive it? Are you feeling it now? And invite them into that exchange because from a, a biophoton perspective, biophoton is life light. That light, that love, that presence that you're sending actually does have a physical impact. And if they let themselves feel it, they may be able to feel it. So you could actually feel the connection if you allow yourself to. And you don't have to if you're new here, but it, it may be... Maybe you don't, you're, you don't want to yet or whatever. You don't have to say yes. But if you want to, we're going to create a quantum circle. So I just invite you to imagine that this gorgeous ball of red thread is traveling through the cosmos from cafe to cafe to cafe. Like really see it with your imagination, like bouncing through. It's bouncing through the clouds and through the stars and it's moving through the snow-capped mountains and through green valleys filled with mustard like where I live. And where is it going through where you live? Just imagine this red thread coming and landing right at the cafe where we are. And just tune in to see if you can be present with an idea of being connected with these other beings across the world. You don't know them. You don't know their beliefs or what they're about. But in this moment, we're here under a common intention to discover teachings about straddling the paradox, which is almost a requirement for these times. So you know that we have this intention of doing this work together. So imagine that there is a connection it's both a deep connection and also a light connection. You can let go at any time, but you can also hold on. The red thread is the color of blood, all of our blood. And the red is red because of the iron of an exploding star. So you can imagine that your red blood carries the codes of stars that are billions of years old. Can you even believe that? I mean, that's like, whoa! This ancient information is within this vessel. It's carried here. And all of these across the world, they too are filled with stardust and ancient knowing and connection with original lands and cultures inside of each one of us. You carry the mitochondrial DNA of your original mothers. It's within you and it's red. You are connected and we are connected to the original mothers. The red thread is an umbilical cord of connection, an acknowledgement of connectivity and an intentional creativity community. And here at Musea, we use the red thread to learn how to be together. And we need some help, y'all, to learn how to be together. 
it's gonna take a little time. Sometimes it's a little bit messy. But we need to do this work to mend, to mend from many challenging systems which have been in place over the past, past 500 years, but over the past 8,000 years, but over the past 12,000 years, to a time before these hierarchical power over structures were created. There is that time and our bodies remember that time, that connection to each other. And so in the spirit of love and in the spirit of all of our muses, Hanging out together in these cafes, I invite you to feel the sense of connectivity. What does that sensation feel like in your body if you tune in? And feel free to just put over in the chat, if you will. Like, how does it feel? I mean, it might feel scary. It might feel exhilarating. It might feel nothing. Like, how does it feel to be connected in this way, which feels quantum to me? It's not quantum mechanics, but it feels quantum because we're across the whole world together. I mean, that's awesome, right? I mean, yay for technology for that. Like we are together and we are related. So how does that feel? The sparkling and togetherness, a sense of belonging, tingly. I love the tingly, peaceful and hopeful. We feel expanded, exhilarated, inspirational, comforted, alive, filled with love. Sweet and healing, high spirit, fly, flying on a carpet together. We feel cared for, we feel a sense in our throat, a frisson of whoosh, light and the feminine. I feel like crying, I feel like home, I feel expanded. We are all related and we are all on this earth together. Big, beautiful breath as you imagine the feeling of your creative spirit, feeling the joy at you being connected in this moment to other creatives. We'll never be together in this way again. This is a special moment in our lives. Just can you call forth a frisson, a sensation, a shimmer, a sparkle of joy in your body? What does it feel like to generate that for yourself while you're connected with others? Can you do it? Try again. You're in the seat of your muse. You're connected with people across the globe. There's a red thread between all of us and you're summoning deep joy. How does it feel? Ask yourself, how do I feel? How do I feel as you allow whatever is present, whatever is coming up, to just be there. And if you're noticing any blocks to feeling connected or blocks to joy, be tender toward that part of yourself. Be tender with what arises. Connection is here. Healing is here. This love is here. This hope is here. This desire for connection is here. Your connection with this gorgeous earth is here. A big, beautiful breath moving through you. And I invite you to, if you have a red thread physically with you, to cut a piece off. We do a lot of virtual circles around here and we don't always ask you to do that. So I'm gonna do that. So just give me a moment, I'm gonna get my thread and I'm inviting you to do the same thing. And in the red thread, we say we are all connected. And what's so awesome about the ceremony of the red thread is it creates a sense of connection, but then we return to sovereignty, right? So there's a lot of clean, clean energy here. We move out and then we come back. It's an inhale, exhale. And wow, do I wish I was able to tie it on you or because it's sometimes hard to tie your own thread. It's like a whole thing. Oh, Jonathan's gonna come tie it for me. Thank you, honey. As you tie it on yourself, just know that this is that symbol of connection. And on uh, my first date with Jonathan, I tied a red thread. We didn't have a second date for a year and 10 days. And we blame the reconnection on the red thread. 
So that red thread, and if you don't have one, I invite you to just use your finger to magically draw it around your wrist. Oh, wonderful. So we are all connected. And our next drawing that we're gonna do is about, about connection. This red thread we just did is another straddling of the threshold. And the threshold that we just straddled is, I'm here, you're there. But we just connected. That's straddling the threshold. And if we can begin to see how that works in every area of our life, it really changes things because it's the awareness of the straddling which amplifies your consciousness, your heart, and your body. So we're gonna go to the next drawing. All right, this next drawing is red thread paper dolls. And so we're going to, in essence, draw a circle of connection. And you could do it any way you want. I'll give a demonstration just just for the heck of it, but I was thinking about this sense of, you don't have to worry about connecting, like not lifting the pen like we did last time. What does it feel like? What does it look like to connect to each other? And so it's very literal and very metaphorical as we're just creating this connection and we're acknowledging this connection and however you feel like doing it. So we're gonna create this a drawing of connection just for a couple minutes. And here's the thing, as you're drawing it, you're feeling it, you're making it real, you're letting yourself. Y'all, when we are traumatized, we begin to put parts of ourself into exile. And we hold those parts back until we feel safe enough in our relationships to call them out. But guess what? Very few relationships ever feel safe enough. So we wait and we wait and we wait to call the exiled self out into connection because we're afraid of getting hurt, but we're gonna get hurt anyway. And we're gonna hurt if we don't connect. And so as you draw this, there's an invitation to just allow a little tiny part of you which has been in exile or has kept yourself separate or hidden, just a little tiny, just a little tiny part of you to come out from the shadowy place into connection because the logical reality in this moment is that we are connected through the cosmos right now. It is, you are we are connected right now. This is real. You're seeing me. You're hearing me. You see each other. This is real. It's happening now. We're now bringing this heart awareness to the idea. Wow, it's happening now, and I'm letting myself feel that it's happening now. The logical part is we're, here we are. We're seeing each other. We're across the computers like it's happening. The mythical part is the imagination of the connectivity and the feeling it. And then we're bringing that into this center place of drawing, which allows those two worlds to become one. We're both sovereign and in unity. So enjoy as you create a sense of connection across the cosmos. And you may add some moons and stars or trees or other things. Just, I'm gonna put a tree in here. So we're just gonna spend a few minutes creating a symbol of acknowledgement of connection. And as a little teeny tiny part of you comes out of exile into this moment, just whatever part feels safe. If the part of you that's in exile doesn't feel safe to come out, that's okay, let's just draw anyway as a little bit of a offering, all right? So just like a couple minutes here.
All right, so as we bring completion to this moment, I just invite you to write a sentence as if you're writing it to us, like you're writing it to everybody that's connected. And I, mine is, I so love being with you. I just so love being with you. It's so, it's such a beautiful feeling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. So what is for you a sentence that you would write to us in this circle? And then if you feel like it to take a photo and share it with us, and also you can put it in, in the chat. Some of you are saying, I, are, I honor our time together. Let's bring all of ourselves together. We weave a beautiful tapestry. All are welcome. I hold you and with, witness you. Red thread forever, a red web of all of us. Together we rise, you are in my heart. Connection is sweet. Our hearts touch each other. Note how you can create this and feel this level of love even if we have never met each other. And it's sacred space. It's not safe space, because I can't guarantee that at any time, but it is sacred space. We've created it. We've created a container together. And in that, there's a level of responsibility and accountability to holding the space together. Do you feel like you're holding it with me? Because it feels like it's, it's not just me broadcasting out to you, right? It's actually you are, are broadcasting to me too. We're all sharing this and building this energy together. And that is a potent reality. And it's a potent teaching as well. And so I would love to, I'm going to invite Jonathan up. Uh, we often do have... A man in the space because wow, here's the tech muse. Beware, there's a man in the space. <laughs> Beware, we always have to announce it. <laughs> Except you know because my hair is so long, if, you know when people approach me from the back at the grocery store or whatever, they're like, "May I help you, ma'am?" I'm like, "Sure, dude." <laughs> it's a little so awkward sometimes. We, we talk a lot in intentional creativity about the science behind the work because these are wonderful and magical thoughts and magical thinking, but there's a lot of science behind mm. them. And we're careful because we we honor science and the mystery. And I never wanna um, I never wanna say something that isn't true. And at the same time, there's a lot of magic happening here and a lot of real life connection. And one of the ways that we talk about that is this word quantum. And it's yes. not quantum mechanics, but what is it? Well, uh, no, not technically. So, two couple first things. Let's talk about magical thinking for a minute because magical thinking is often um, a slippery slope and a perilous journey because magical thinking um, is not connected to anything that is empirically evidently true, right? Now, let's look at the other side of that, which is a quote by the famous uh, author, British author, Arthur C. Clarke, that said, any technology that is suitably advanced is indistinguishable from magic. So indistinguishable kind of is an equal sign, <laughs> right? Magic is an advanced technology, suitably advanced technology. And because we can't describe it with our sensor package, it potentially occurs to us as magic. So, in the case of quantum mechanics, guess what? Nobody's ever seen an electron. No one's ever seen one. You can see evidence of one as it passes through frozen gas. You can see various little tidbits it leaves around. No one's actually went, hey, what's up, man? Hey, electron, how's it going? <laughs> right? Like, nobody's done that. And it's not going to happen because it's infinitesimally small. And it's beyond our ability to perceive its existence, even with sensors. We can only actually detect it most of the time with math. Uh, and also all the other subatomic particles. Doesn't mean they're not there. Doesn't mean the germs aren't out there. Doesn't mean anything that, that we can't see isn't out there. So how, okay. how is the red thread and us together okay. right now? How is that So quantum? let's take a little jump to the next couple of lily pads, right? So, so the idea of 
quantum entanglement means quantum, let's just separate that out for a second, means imperceptibly small mm -hmm. at, at orders of magnitude that are detectable only through probability of, in mathematics. So that's how small we're talking about. And so entanglement. Entanglement is a relatively easy word to understand because entanglement infers relationship. It is a relationship that is arrived at by one of two ways, by accident or by choice. Mm. By and choice. Okay, so that's a key key thing here. It is a key thing. Some some entanglements are accidental, like the person that rear ends you is entangled with you for a while by accident, right? But when you make a choice to entangle your energetic signature with another energetic signature, you're creating a bond that actually transcends space, time, and the functions of space and time, which are electromagnetism and gravity. And so when you say um, that you are using this pathway of red thread to connect to each other across space time, which in this case is one thing, right? Because it infers both, both aspects. When you're saying that this is so, the choice that each of you are making and that you are making in turn is that each of you become, if you will, a node upon a web or a network, a fabric that is all stitched together through the cascade of waveform collapse known as choice. So choice, our choice to be connected In, is what is that's connecting right. us. And so energetically you're sitting out there wherever you happen to be and we're sitting we're standing we're in here. a cafe we're well i know we're in a cafe <laughs> but the idea here is is that the energetic container that has been produced through your choice to be here is what gives you access to the entanglement mm. right and so hallelujah to that right, right there right and so it is so because a you say it is so, which means that you've changed an energetic signature into form by saying, like, here it is. Yeah. Right? Right. And drawing it out. Yeah. Right? And so that entanglement is a choice point at which there's some beauty that arrives because it's not just you. Like if one person, I don't know, got a call and had to drop off the Zoom call or something, even though they have left the actual entanglement of this energetic circle, the circle or the network or the web self heals, mm. right? It just creates new and different connections. And so this entanglement piece is an energetic signature created by a group of living, thinking, breathing human beings who have really consecrated a choice with one another. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right? So there's there's really good physics that backs this entanglement piece up. It does not mean that in, in true physics, in the true physics of quantum entanglement, an electron spinning one way over here and an electron spinning the same way, when one changes, the other changes instantly despite yeah. space or time. Right. Okay. So that is probably the penultimate mathematical expression mm. of that happening. Right. However, we're talking about degrees of relevancy. Yeah. Right? So if you adopt and, and onboard that for yourself, then it is true for you through your perception and through your actualization of it. And by thinking that and onboarding that, you are actually causing an energetic thought in your mind, which becomes a state of being in your body. And that state of being in your body is happening because your mind is instructing your brain to cause a cascade of chemicals, which activate genes 
gene expression in your body that turn on those glands and cells and parts of your body that create what you feel when you have feelings. So the feelings you have of love and connection and peace and happiness and, and connectedness, those feelings are from gene expression, which is caused by your brain, which is impacted by your mind. I love it. And it just, it all flows together seamlessly. So it Thank is you. so because you have chosen it. I love that. Thank you. Why is this important? I'll just ask you, why do you think it's important? Thank you, Jonathan. You're asking me why it's important? No, I'm asking them. <laughs> why? <laughs> why is this important? Just think for a minute. Why does it matter to you that what we're doing, hanging out with the muse, straddling the thresholds, actually has a scientific basis? Just think about it for a minute. How does it change our creative process here to know that almost everything we're doing has this exploration of somatic sensuality and science behind it? It might matter to you for different reasons. I know for those of us who work in the field of trauma, it matters because we need to know exactly how it works in order to duplicate it when someone needs it. And so when I'm with someone who is in recovery from trauma, it's important for me to know the pathway of how their brain is functioning and how their body is functioning, what the responses are and what kind of intentional creativity process I can initiate to move us to the next 10 seconds. If I'm working with a child who is selective mute and I am working to get them to speak, it is important for me to know how their mechanism in their physical body is working and what process I would design to engineer the potential of speaking, which in that case is actually surprise. Getting them to say something aloud by asking them a question after we've been drawing for a few seconds. You can try this with, with people that you work with or live with if they're having a hard time to just do some drawing, you know, have them do some of the drawings we've done here and then ask them a question. Your brain is working differently. And so um, when I'm working with people who are in recovery from a broken heart and it feels like it's everything, everything, you can't barely breathe. Maybe you've felt that before. I have to know both the magic loving thing that I could do with intentional creativity and I, I have to know how it works because I'm designing a process which is going to move them. It's not a concept, it's a reality and it becomes real because we're not just talking, we're drawing it. You just drew, I invited you with words to feel the connection, we held the red thread, we drew the connection, we heard the science about the connection, and now we're returning to it, speaking about the connection so that we have this understanding of how this works. And in our community, people say when they tug on the red thread, that's one of our terms for, I need help, y'all, like tugging on the thread, it's, it's not just a word. I mean, you actually then have posted, and there's a feeling of requesting support, and then hundreds of us go, I'm tugging back. I hear you, I'm with you, or whatever it is, we're tugging back. That's the push and the pull. That's the exchange. And many, many, many people report that as extremely somatically, emotionally real. Have some of you felt that when you needed it? I mean, sometimes you posted, but even sometimes you didn't post and you felt it just by thinking of it. And what if we could return to this time together just by recalling this moment and this image? What if you could any time return to the muse by imagining the chair and centering yourself <sighs> inside of that chair like here I am? What if this whole thing that we're doing right now is a sacred practice and a scientific experiment and how we're creating global community together across the miles? Because I think that's what we're doing.
So I'd love for you to hold up your drawings. I'd love to see them. Go ahead and hold them up so I can take a look at these connectivities. Wonderful. This is now another level of quantum, right? Because now we're looking at each other's drawings and seeing it. I love that. Maybe we can take a screenshot of that because that is beautiful. Look how different everybody is and yet there's that sense of connectivity. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. Ah, now we're going to go to another drawing. Do you need to stand up and stretch? Oh, okay, let's do that. Our clock here is always at happy hour. The battery ran out, so I don't know what time it is, So, but I feel like it's time to stretch. <laughs> All right. Oh, wonderful. Ooh, just feeling so yummy being with you all. We are... We are here at Musea, and if you're new here, uh, we have um, been holding a physical building as a part of our work for over 20 years. And so right now we're in our 6,500 square foot campus, which has housing for community members who live here. And we also have gardens and a vineyard and classroom. We're right now in the film studio, which we call the great room. And then we also have Musette, which is our little wine bar. And today the rosé is being bottled outside in the rain here at Musea. So there's like all these things going on at once. There's also in another room, um, letters being written to people who are in courses with red th physical red threads flying out. There are children here, there are, there's body work happening, there's all kinds of things happening. So there's magic all through this space that you are a part of as we continue to imagine ourselves with this little cafe that is each where you are, but also where I am.